Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating a Python application to take screenshots of your screen. First, let's take a look at the overview of the application that we will be creating in this video. Let me go ahead and run the application with so python screenshot.py. So this is the application that we'll be creating in this video and this application is built using tkinter and tkinter framework and python. So it has two options. One is to take the screenshot of the entire screen and the second is to take the screenshot of a particular region of the screen. So it has two more options. One is to show the screenshot after it has been clipped and the second one is to copy the screenshot to the clipboard so that once we take the screenshot it can be pasted it into some other files like Word, Excel or something like that. So let me go ahead and show you how this application works. Uh, first, I want to see the screenshot that has been clipped when I click on the clip full screen button. So I'll give this checkbox a tick mark and then go ahead and clip the full screen. So this shows the screenshot that has been taken using the application. And then if I want to take the screenshot of a particular region of the screen, I will give the coordinates like let's say 200 from top, I will require from 100th position and then tell the 800 pixel in the right side and then from top I'll give 800. So once I clip it shows the screenshot of the region that's been clipped. For example in this screenshot it takes the part here. So that's about the overview of the application and now let's get started on the coding part on creating the application. Okay so on to the creation of the application. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a new folder for our application and I'll name it as screenshot. So I'll go ahead inside screenshot and then run Visual Studio Code. I use Visual Studio Code but you can use any text editor of your choice like Sublime Text or PyCharm or anything like that. So I have come into this folder and the next thing we are going to create is a requirements.txt file. This requirements.txt file will be useful to tr keep, keep track of the dependencies that we'll be using in the project. So I'll go ahead and create one. Next. So the next thing that we'll be creating is a virtual environment that helps to create an abstraction of for our application from the normal Python environment that is installed in the system. So I'll go ahead and create one. The file code is and then I'll name the virtual environment as VNV. So once I run this, you can see that we have a folder inside our project which will have different folders. And then to activate the virtual environment, I will run VNV slash script slash activate. This differs uh, in between operating systems. So for in this case, we are using Windows and to activate the virtual environment we run this command so this is the name of the virtual environment and inside the script folder we have a patch file called activate you can see this when we navigate here so when we call the vnv slash script slash activate this activate dot batch file will run and then it will start the virtual environment so the first thing that we'll be installing in this environment is tkinter which is the main thing that we'll be using in this project so I'll go ahead and run install tk. So tk is the module name of tkinter library. So once I run this, it installs the application, sorry, a framework. Let's go ahead and create the application. So I'll create a new Python file called screenshot.py. So this is the Python file that we'll be using for the entire project. So I'll go ahead and import the tkinter library tkinter as tk. The first thing that we'll be creating is a tkinter frame window and I'll go ahead and create it. So it equals to tk dot tk and then we'll give the title of this as root dot title and I'll give the name as screenshot clipper. So once we create, it, create this uh, root variable we have to run it in a loop so that the application will be running till we close it. So root dot main loop. I'll go ahead and save it. And once I run it, 
Python screenshot up here. So once I run it, I'll get this window, which is the take into window that we have just now created, and it has the title as screenshot clipper. Uh, let me give a comment that this is for the root. And then the second thing that we have to create is the canvas. So this canvas gives us gives the application a definitive size. So let's go ahead and create it. So the now we're going to create canvas. And then canvas equals to tk dot canvas. And then we'll bind this canvas to the root. And then the size of the canvas is width. Let's say let's give it five hundred. And then the height will be around 250. And then we can give a background color for this canvas as um, light blue. Okay. I've created the canvas now. And then the second thing that we have to do is we have to pack this canvas before we run it in the root.main loop. So I'll go ahead and run it canvas.pack. So I'll go ahead and save it. And then once I run it, we get the canvas, which is in light blue color, as we have specified in the take inter window with the size of 500 to 250. Uh, let's start implementing the main logic of the application. So uh, I'll first go ahead and create a button for the full screen. So I'll type in this FS for full screen, clip button equal to pk dot button. And then the text will say clip full screen. And then the command will be get full screen. Okay. And then the background of the button will give it as black. And then the text of the button will be in white color. So foreground equals to white. Okay, let me wrap this up in double quotes. And then we'll give a padding for this. So pad x equals to 10. Okay. So we get a squiggly line in yellow color saying that this function is not defined. So let's go ahead and create a function called def get full screen. And then let's just print something on the console button has been clicked. Let me go ahead and run this application. So when I run it, we don't get any buttons in this window. And that's because we are not uh, binding this button to the can canvas. So let me go ahead and bind it. So canvas dot create window. And then we'll place this button in 350 a 110 or 100 or something like that and then we'll give the window as fs clip button so this creates a button in 350 cross 110 coordinate inside the window so for example we have created the window is as 500 into 250 so this will place the button in the right center part Let's go ahead and run the application. So once I run this, we are getting a button. And once I click on this button, we get button has been clicked, printed on the console. Let's start implementing the get full screen function. So the main library that we'll be using in this code is the by screenshot, which will help us in taking the screenshot of the screen. Let's install. I'll go ahead and install it. Screenshot. So this command installs the pi screenshot library and then if we check pip freeze it will show us the libraries that we are using currently in our project so tk is for the take inter library and the pi screenshot is what we have installed right now and the other things are sub dependencies so we don't have to look at that for right now so if you look at the requirements.txt file it is an empty file right now but this file should have the list of dependencies that we'll be using in this project. So we'll run pip freeze requirements.txt. 
So this populates this requirements.txt file with the list of requirements and the version number of each package that we've been used in this code. Let's go ahead and implement the get full screen function. So I'll say image equal to image wrap. So we have to imp import the by screenshot inside our code to use it. So I'll say import by screenshot as image grab. So once I run this, I'll say image grab dot grab. So this code grabs the entire screen and then saves it in the image variable. Now let's go ahead and save the screenshot using image dot save. And then we have to give a file name as something like clip.png. So I've say I've... let me go ahead and run the application using Python screenshot.py. So we get the window and then once I click on clip full screen, we have a clip.png that is created in the project folder. But there is one catch, which is we have the screen clipper taken to window in the screenshot. But what we want is we have to hide the window while taking the screenshot and then after taking the screenshot, it has to appear right back again. So to do that, we will be using root.withdraw, which will withdraw the root window. Withdraw and then to put it back again, we will use root.the icon file. So I've saved it and then go ahead and stop this application so i'll run the application again so python screenshot.py and then once i click on, click on the clip full screen we get a screenshot but there is one catch where the window is hiding behind but the transition is somewhat slow so to compensate that we can give a time lag so root dot withdraw and time dot sleep let's say 0.4 and then we have to import the time library okay so let me go ahead and stop this and then i'll run it again so we'll go ahead and clip screen again and in this screenshot we no longer see the ticking tab window and then we get the clear screenshot one thing to notice is that we're not doing any exception handling as of now so we'll go ahead and create a try block and then we'll move this logic inside try block and then in exception block we accept exception as e so we'll print the exception and also return it We'll move this root dot withdraw before we run the try block and then the root dot the icon of i oops sorry root dot withdraw and then we'll move the root dot the icon of i after we run the exception case okay so the second thing we find is that whenever we run the second thing we notice is that whenever we run this get full screen function we override this clip.png file so to make it not override the previous screenshot we sh we should create a unique name for each screenshot we take and for that we will create a new variable called image name which will get the current date time so to do that we'll import from date time into date time so date time dot now okay so this will have the image name as the current date time and then we'll append the dot png extension and then we'll supply it to the image dot save so we'll go ahead and close it and then run the application again okay so this time when i run the clip uh, when i run the clip full screen function I get an error like daytime is not a string. So 
I will convert that as a string and then we'll turn it back again okay now when we clip it we get an error like invalid argument and that is because we have a white space and a colon here we have to remove it so what we can do is dot replace Place with the blank and then we'll replace the colon with the blank. Okay. So I'll go ahead and close it. Okay, I'll run the application again. So I can screenshot.py. And once I click on clip for screen, it creates a new file which will have the screenshot. And then when I do clip full screen again, it creates a new file with a different name. Now let's start implementing the clip with dimensions part, which has four input fields and then one button. Let me go ahead and create the input fields. So user left. This is to get the left coordinate. TK dot entry. This will create the input field, and then we'll bind the input field with the root, and then the current text will be zero. And then after creating this element, we'll have to bind it with the canvas. So canvas dot create window. Oops, uh, I think we have to move this up so that the script recognizes the canvas. And then create window. I'll place it in hundred comma forty five, and then window equals to user left so this is the variable that we have created here so like this we have to create three more the second one is for the top go ahead and change this and then paste it here and then move it to 75 let's say and the next one is for the right right user right and then user right and then we'll place it here at 105 so if you look at this coordinates i'm keeping 30 difference between each and every input element and then finally the bottom sorry bottom so use it bottom and then i'll place it 135 okay so we have the input fields now and then now we have to get the input uh, values that the user enters in the input field so to do that we will create a function called get dimensions which is f get dimensions and then left equals to user left dot get and then to remove the white spaces, uh, we'll do dot strip. And then we'll copy the same for all the four fields. So left, right, sorry, left, top, right, and bottom. I'll rename it here. Left, top, and then okay so we get the four values here and then while taking the screenshot we have to pass these values to get the specific coordinates uh, to get the screenshot of the specific coordinates so we have to modify this function into a common function called clip screen so clip screen which will get the coordinates let's say that as dimensions so we have to take the screenshot as per the dimensions so i'll go ahead and copy the entire logic inside the clip screen okay so based on the dimensions we have to get the screenshot so let's add an if loop here 
So if we have dimensions, time don't sleep, we'll put it here. And then if there is dimensions, we will create the image variable as image grab dot get of sorry grab grab of b box equals to tuple and then we'll map the four variables as so dimensions so we get the dimensions here and then give those dimensions to the grab method which will get the screenshot of the dimension specified by the user if not we will capture the entire screen so we'll implement that here so in the else part and then after the image has been grabbed we'll save it and then we'll call the clip screen method from the uh, from the get full screen as so class don't worry clip screen of none so in the get full screen we don't specify the dimensions instead we have to get the entire screen so we don't pass the dimensions variable and we pass it as none but in this case we will pass it as clip screen and then we'll pass a tuple like left top right and then bottom oops bottom so when we pass this it gets the user inputs and then flips the screen as so and then the second thing we have to do is we have to create a button to call the get dimension function for that we will create dimension clip button equals to tk dot button then text equals to clip with dimensions and then the command equal to get dimension and background let's say black and the foreground as white then we'll give the same padding as 10 pad x equals to 10 okay and then we have to bind this button to the canvas we have to bind this dim flip button to the canvas so canvas dot create window and then i'll place the button at 100 comma let's say 190 and then window equals to dim clip button so now we have the button here and then let me go ahead and run this application we get only three input boxes but instead we should have got four see what happened here yeah so the root bottom we, did, we didn't create the can no, we didn't create window for this user bottom so let me go ahead and create it user bottom so, uh, bottom and then i'll go ahead and write this 135 okay and go ahead and run it again okay now we get four input boxes and then we have to put dimensions and a clip screen button let me try giving a number so when we see this, when I type a number in one input box, it gets replicated in all these things. It is an error scenario. So we have to fix it right now. And the reason for that is because we have a text field, which is all zeros. Let me go ahead and remove it. And then when I run again, okay. So oh, now I'm able to get this 0, 100, 900, and then 900. So when I clip a dimension, this is the new file that's created and it is clipped as per the dimensions that I've specified. 
so our code is now working and now we have to move to creating the two check checkboxes one to copy the clipboard to sorry, copy the clip to the clipboard and the second one is to show the clip after we have taken the screenshot to do that we will create two new checkboxes one is here let's say copy clip check Let's do tk dot set button and we'll point it to root with a text equal to copy screenshot to clipboard and then we have to give a variable so to check whether the uh, checkbox has been clicked or not we need a variable which stores either zero or one so let me go ahead and create two new variables one is copy clip equals to tk dot in car and then the next one is to show clip equal to tk dot in bar and I'll use the copy clip where well, what oh, yeah so copy clip and then show clip Check equals to tk dot check button and then I'll point it to root text equals to show clip and then the variable will be equals to show clip. Okay, so now we have created two new checkboxes. Let's see if it is appearing here. Uh, right now we don't see the checkboxes that is because we didn't pack it with the canvas so let's go ahead and pack it copy clip dot pack oops sorry copy clip check dot pack and then show clip check dot pack when we run the application now we see two new checkboxes Right now we get the variables, but we are not using it. Let's go ahead and implement the copy clip and show clip functions. So let's say if uh, if copy clip dot get print copy clip has been called, and then if show clip dot get print show clip has been called okay let me go ahead and run it again and then i click both of it so once i click full screen i get these two logs which shows that these two if loops has been executed so let's go ahead and implement the function for that. So def prepare copy def copy to clipboard and then to copy to clipboard we need to install a dependency called pywin32 and it works only inside windows for mac os and linux we need to follow a separate process but this tutorial is to copy the screenshot in, in a windows environment so let's go ahead and pip install pywin32 pip install pywin32 so it gets installed now and then oh sorry have to install inside the virtual environment so we in the scripts activate then i'll run the same command so now it's installing inside the virtual environment after it gets in, it gets installed we'll check the if freeze and we see the pywin32 installed here Let's go ahead and override the requirements.txt for the new change requirements.txt 
Okay, so now we'll go ahead and import the Windows 32 screenshot. Import Win32 like clipboard. And then let's go ahead and copy command image equal to image dot open. And then we need to give it a file path which has to be uh, for the image that has to be opened. File path. Which we will get using this file path, and then now we get uh, yellow squiggly brackets because image is not defined. So we'll go ahead and implement import it from PIL. So PIL is the payload library that we installed previously, and we'll import the image from there. So let's go ahead. Okay, now we have opened the file and then we have to convert that file into byte streams. So output equals to bytes.io bytes.io bytes .io. and this bytes.io we have to implement from io import bytes.io okay and then we have to convert this image to rgb and then save that output as bmp so from rgb to bmp so now we have to convert this rgb image to bmp so image dot convert rgb dot Save as BMP. Okay. Output. And then we get the data from there. Output dot get value. And then we get from 40. And then we'll close the output. So now we have the data which has the clipboard contents and now we have to paste this clipboard content to Windows 32 clipboard and for that we will pass this data to another function which we will call send to clipboard and then clip type comma data. So we'll pass this to this function, we send to clipboard and then when we to clipboard dot cfdid come out the data. And copying to clipboard is a straightforward thing. So we'll just open the clipboard and then we'll empty the clipboard. And then we have to set the clip data that we have got from copy to clipboard function inside the win32 clipboard dot set clipboard data to clip type and then the data and then we have to close the clipboard because we have written it to it close clipboard okay so now we have written the function to copy the image and save it to the clipboard. And then we have to call it from here. So prepare to copy clipboard. Prepare copy to clipboard. Copy to clipboard. And then we'll give the image name, which is the file that we are creating. And now to show the clipboard, we'll just show, call image dot show. Okay, so we'll just run the application now to check if it's, everything is working fine or not. So I'll click on show clip. So when I clip screen, it shows the clipboard contents. Okay. And now I copy the screenshot, clipboard screen. 
Okay, now I'll go for WordPad and then paste it. We get the screenshot here, but I think there's some issue with WordPad. Let's try it in Google Docs. And when we paste this, we get the screenshots clearly. And let me go ahead and zoom it. Okay, so this is the screenshot that we've taken. And now, there is one more thing left to do and which is to see if there is one more thing left to do there is one more thing left to do and which is whenever we take a screenshot we don't know if that's completed or not so the window appears back again but we're not sure whether the screenshot is taken correctly or if some error condition has happened so to do that we'll create a label which will appear at the bottom of the screen to check if the image has been saved or not so let me go ahead and create a label uh, label equals to ek dot label and then we'll point it with the root and then the text of null the background is light blue and we'll append it with the canvas create window and we'll position it at the bottom so 250 comma 230 and then window equals to label sorry label okay to populate this label we have to return after we clipped it so return clipping done image name is uh, let's paste the image name here there is one last thing to do which is to update this label variable as per the current state of the application so let's say that we should get this clipping has been done or if there's an exception we'll return an exception so we have to show that to the user so to get it we will do label dot configure and then text equals to the clip response of the clip and then the same thing for the get dimension clip screen so once we run that save that we can run our application and then once i do a clip screen it gets the clip and then we get a response that clipping has been done and the image name is this one so like that we will clip a dimension using these coordinates 600 sorry 600 and 700 so once i run this we get an error that we have a known option i think yeah that's because we didn't specify it as a text so once i could give text equals to and then i close it and then i run the application again so once i give the dimensions and sorry 600 we get a clip and then it says clipping has been done image name is this one so when we go to the image name we get the clip here so that's about the application and we can add more functionalities to the project as per our needs but this is the basic form which we've created in this video if you have liked this video a subscribe to the channel would be awesome and catch you guys in the next video